Faith leaders convinced King Charles to repair his relationship with Prince Harry. I truly have a broken heart for Harry, his only surviving parent, a parent that he loves. This man put Harry and his family in danger and has worked the very most to abuse Harry and Meghan for the last four and a half years. King Charles is a man of faith. Out of all of the Windsor clan, I would also consider Charles to be the best one on multi-faith issues and religious topics. He spent decades developing relationships within the Anglican community, the Catholic community, the Hindu, Muslim and Jewish communities. Now, does he practice what he preaches? Not at all. He's a degenerate cheater who gaslighted and emotionally abused his first wife, Princess Diana. Their marriage, which was once seen as a fairy tale, quickly turned into a nightmare for Diana. She was often left to deal with the emotional turmoil alone, while Charles continued his affair with Camilla Parker Bowles. The public saw glimpses of Diana's distress, but few knew the extent of her suffering behind closed doors. Charles's actions not only broke Diana's heart, but also shattered the public's perception of the royal family. The emotional abuse she endured was compounded by the constant media scrutiny, making her life a living hell. Despite her efforts to maintain a brave face, the cracks in their relationship were evident to those who looked closely. Diana's struggles were not just personal, they were emblematic of a larger issue within the royal family, where appearances often took precedence over genuine emotional well-being. And he was too self-absorbed to raise his two sons, Prince William and Prince Harry. Growing up in the royal spotlight, the boys often found themselves without the emotional support they desperately needed from their father. Charles was more concerned with his own image and duties than with the well-being of his children. This neglect left a lasting impact on both William and Harry, who had to navigate their formative years largely on their own. The absence of a nurturing father figure was felt deeply, especially during the tumultuous years following Diana's tragic death. The boys were thrust into the public eye, expected to maintain a stoic demeanour while grappling with their grief. Charles's inability to provide the emotional support they needed only added to their sense of isolation. The bond between the brothers grew stronger as they leaned on each other for support, but the scars of their father's neglect remained. He spent the past five years putting his younger son, Prince Harry, daughter-in-law, Meghan Markle, and their two children in mortal danger. The relentless media scrutiny and lack of support from the royal family have made their lives incredibly challenging. Harry and Meghan's decision to step back from royal duties was met with harsh criticism, but it was a necessary step to protect their mental health and safety. Charles's refusal to stand by them only exacerbated the situation, leaving them vulnerable to constant attacks from the press. The couple's move to the United States was a bid for freedom and a chance to raise their children away from the toxic environment of the British tabloids. However, the threats and harassment have followed them across the Atlantic, making it clear that their struggle for peace is far from over. Charles's actions, or lack thereof, have played a significant role in the ongoing turmoil faced by his younger son and his family. As a way to bring them to heel so he could control them completely, Charles's need for control has been a recurring theme throughout his life, often at the expense of those closest to him. His authoritative demeanour and rigid expectations have created a rift within the family, making it difficult for genuine relationships to flourish. Harry's decision to break away from the royal fold was seen as an act of defiance, challenging the very foundation of Charles's control. The tension between father and son has only grown, with each public statement and interview adding fuel to the fire. Charles's attempts to reassert his authority have been met with resistance, as Harry continues to prioritise his family's well-being over royal protocol. The power struggle between them is a stark reminder of the complexities and challenges that come with being part of the royal family. He's also rebuffed every effort Prince Harry has made to reconcile. Despite the public perception of a united front, the reality behind palace walls is far more fractured. Harry has made numerous attempts to bridge the gap, seeking a semblance of normalcy and familial connection. However, each olive branch has been met with cold indifference or outright rejection. The emotional toll of these failed attempts has been significant, leaving Harry feeling increasingly isolated from the family he once knew. The lack of reconciliation has not only affected Harry, but has also strained his relationship with other family members, who are caught in the crossfire of this ongoing feud. The hope for a peaceful resolution seems distant, as the wounds inflicted by years of neglect and misunderstanding run deep, and have some semblance of a familial relationship. The royal family, often seen as a symbol of unity and tradition, is grappling with internal discord that threatens to unravel the very fabric of their public image. The tension is palpable in family photos and public appearances, where forced smiles and stiff postures betray the underlying strife. Harry's sense of isolation is a stark contrast to the image of a close-knit family that the royals strive to project. The ongoing conflict serves as a reminder that even the most revered institutions are not immune to the complexities of human relationships.
As the world watches, the hope for reconciliation remains, but the path to healing is fraught with challenges and uncertainties. The story of King Charles and his family is a poignant example of how power, control, and emotional neglect can shape the lives of those in the public eye, leaving a legacy that is both tragic and instructive. Well, Charles has come to Jesus, he has received religious counselling, and he is now open to reconciling with Harry. And yes, this is mostly about optics, as in, how can the head of the Church of England behave in such an openly unchristian manner to his family? The possibility of a thaw in the House of Windsor feud comes at a time when Charles is said to be concerned about financial demands from the Sussexes. The tension between Prince Charles and the Sussexes, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, has been a topic of much speculation and intrigue. The financial aspect of this royal rift adds another layer of complexity to an already convoluted relationship. Charles, who has always been meticulous about the royal finances, is reportedly worried about the financial stability of Harry and Meghan. The couple, who stepped back from royal duties in 2020, have since been financially independent, relying on various media deals and public appearances to sustain their lifestyle. However, the sustainability of these ventures is now in question. Should their television deals dry up next year, Charles has been licking his chops at the idea that the Sussexes would go broke. The Sussexes have signed lucrative deals with streaming giants like Netflix and Spotify, but the entertainment industry is notoriously fickle. If these deals were to fall through, it could leave Harry and Meghan in a precarious financial position. This potential vulnerability has not gone unnoticed by Charles. He has been closely monitoring their financial moves, perhaps even hoping for a misstep. The idea that they might come back to the royal fold, financially humbled, seems to be a scenario he has entertained more than once, and come crawling back so that he could abuse them and make them into his perfect scapegoats. They are not coming back. The dynamics within the royal family have always been complex, but the current situation is unprecedented. Harry and Meghan have made it clear that they have no intention of returning to their former roles. They have carved out a new life for themselves in the United States, far from the scrutiny and expectations of the British monarchy. Their determination to remain independent is evident in their actions and statements. Despite the financial uncertainties, they seem committed to forging their own path. Charles, on the other hand, appears to be grappling with a mix of concern and perhaps a desire for vindication. The idea of them returning, only to be controlled and used as scapegoats, speaks volumes about the underlying tensions and unresolved issues within the family. This chapter in the House of Windsor's history is far from over, and the financial concerns are just one piece of a much larger puzzle. The world watches with bated breath, wondering what the next move will be in this royal saga. Look at this wording too. He still loves Harry and wants him back for personal reasons, regardless that he and Meghan do not want to return to royal life. This sentiment from King Charles is quite telling. It shows a deep, personal longing for his son, a desire that transcends the public and royal duties. It's a father's wish to have his family close, to mend the rift that has caused so much pain and public scrutiny. The complexities of royal life often overshadow the simple human emotions at play here. Charles's love for Harry is evident, but it is entangled with the expectations and responsibilities of their royal roles. The question remains, can this love bridge the gap created by their differing paths? He has faith that Harry could return, is that the only way a reconciliation could happen in Charles's mind? Are those his terms? This faith in Harry's return suggests a hope that the prodigal son will come back, not just to the family, but to the fold of royal duties. It raises the question of whether reconciliation is conditional on Harry's return to the UK and his resumption of royal responsibilities. Is Charles's vision of reconciliation tied to the traditional roles and expectations of the monarchy? Or is there room for a new kind of relationship? one that respects Harry and Meghan's choices while still maintaining family bonds. The dynamics of this potential reconciliation are complex, involving not just personal feelings, but also public perceptions and the future of the monarchy itself. Like, Harry would have to uproot his life in America and return just to be with Charles. What even is this? The idea of Harry uprooting his life in America to return to the UK for the sake of reconciliation brings up many questions. It highlights the sacrifices and adjustments that would be required on both sides. Harry and Meghan have built a new life in the US, one that offers them a sense of freedom and independence from the constraints of royal duties. Would returning to the UK mean giving up this newfound autonomy? And what about Meghan and their children? How would they fit into this scenario? The notion of uprooting their lives for the sake of reconciliation with Charles seems like a monumental task, fraught with emotional and logistical challenges. It also raises the issue of whether true reconciliation can only be achieved through physical proximity and a return to traditional roles, or if there is a way to reconcile while respecting the new paths that Harry and Meghan have chosen. 
the future of their relationship with Charles and the royal family hangs in the balance, dependent on finding a way to bridge these divides. Because it feels like more palace wheel spinning, as they try to position Charles as the one who is pushing for reconciliation and being rebuffed by Harry, when the opposite has been true for years. Chuckles needed someone to tell him he needs to repair his relationship with the son for whom he revoked security and allowed the rabid racial abuse of said son's wife and his own grandchild. How can KC3 have any moral authority to be anything, let alone king? Hash abolish the monarchy, 